Let's take a look at an example and get some practice using that hybrid pi model for our BJT. So in this example, what we want to do is calculate the small signal voltage gain of the BJT circuit shown below. And so this is the same circuit that we have considered previously. So we're told we have beta equals 100 and VBE equals 0.7 volts. And so as we mentioned before, ideally we would have a coupling capacitor which is separating this AC voltage source from our DC side of the circuit. But we're just going to keep looking at this same circuit for now and we're going to get back to that a little later. Uh, so of course the difference between this and the previous time we saw this circuit is now we have some values for our RB, our RC, our VCC, and our VBB. So let's go ahead and get right into things. And if we're looking for this small signal gain, our small signal voltage gain, what we want to do first is construct a small signal equivalent circuit. So let's say we want to create our small signal equivalent circuit. And so essentially what this circuit is going to be is kind of like we talked about if the signals are small enough, we're gonna be just looking at the AC components of our, our signals and ignoring the DC components. So because of that, we need our DC sources removed from the circuit above. And so we kind of talked about this a couple videos back. How do we remove our, our DC components? Um, of course, we're just going to short out voltage sources so we have zero voltage. We said this VCC is going to be at signal ground. So we get something that looks like this. The big difference between what we're going to do here and what we did in the previous video is now we're going to actually replace our bipolar junction transistor with that hybrid pi model we developed in the most recent video. So the best way to do this is to identify our nodes. So of course we have our collector, our base, and our emitter. And so let's, as we start to draw our, our, our updated small signal equivalent circuit, let's start by writing out our base, collector, and emitter nodes. So here's our base, here's our collector, here's our emitter. And so what we can do is, of course, we can fill in what's between these based on our hybrid pi model. So we know we have some resistance R pi, which is between our base and our emitter. So that's R pi, and we said that voltage across that. Sometimes we'll call it V pi, sometimes VBE. And then we know between our collector and emitter, we have this dependent current source. So we have something that looks like this, and this current here is going to be GM V pi. So, so far all we have here is from our hybrid pi model. Now what we want to do is we want to come back to our circuit up here and say, for instance, what's connected to our emitter node? And so in this case, we can see our emitter is connected to ground. So let's go ahead and make that connection. So we can say our emitter is simply going to be connected to signal ground. Same thing for our base and our collector. So let's go ahead and do our collector. So for our collector, we see that it's connected to RC, which is then connected to signal ground. So coming back down here, we can say we have some resistor, our collector resistor RC, and the other side of that RC is connected to our ground. And we can also go ahead and say that our output resistant, or sorry, our output um, voltage, we note here, is equal to our VCE voltage. And so we can update our small signal model and say that our output voltage is going to be the voltage across this resistor RC. So this is RV out, which as we said is equal to VCE. And so you note here I'm using phasor notation. As I've said in a previous video, you can use phasor notation or you can use the small signal, the lowercase parameter, lowercase subscript. Either one is fine. Okay, so finally we want to come back up here to our base. So at our base, we have the resistor RB, which then goes through our source and then to ground. Uh, remember, we shorted out that VBB source, so that's why I didn't mention that. So let's come back down here to our base and add that. So we have a resistor RB directly connected to our base. And then we have a source, our small signal source VS, which is connected between that base resistor and ground. So this is our VS. Okay, so this is now our, our small signal equivalent circuit that we set out to create. And so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and analyze this and we're gonna get sort of a general equation, again, just for this particular circuit configuration, and we're gonna see where we need to go from there. So sort of as a starting point, 
we know we're looking for the small signal voltage gain. And so by definition, we're going to find that small signal voltage gain as A sub V. So gain of voltage is the output voltage over our input voltage, which in this case is that Vs. So what we want to do then is we want to get an expression for the output voltage, an expression for the input voltage, and then relate the two to each other. And so we can kind of see that our sort of parameter that connects the two sides of the circuit is this V pi. Uh, so kind of looking ahead, we, we expect that V pi to help us there. So let's start by looking at the output side of our circuit. And so if we look over here, we can see that this current is flowing in this direction. So we have zero current flowing this way because there's no return path. So all of that current is gonna stay in that, that right loop and go through RC. And so of course that's going to induce a voltage drop that looks like this. So because of that, we need to have a negative sign when we write that our output voltage is equal to negative that current, which is GMV pi times RC, okay? So there's one equation for our output side. Now, coming back to our input side, let's see if we can get an equation for our V pi in terms of our input voltage Vs. And so we can do that pretty easily using voltage division. Um, of course, we could draw, a, a, we could label a current and we could explicitly step through using KVL and Ohm's law, but we can do all of that at once with voltage division. And we get that our V pi is equal to our Vs, which is our input, times R pi divided by Rb plus R pi. So remember for voltage division, we put the resistor of interest in the numerator divided by the sum of all the resistors in series. And so now all we're gonna do is we're gonna substitute this V pi into this expression here. And if we do that, we have an expression for our AV. So substituting in, so let me actually just come down here. So we have our AV, which again is V out over Vs is equal to negative GMRC times R pi divided by R pi plus RB. All right, so this equation here would be sort of our general equation for this circuit. Uh, again, if the configuration changes, this equation isn't going to hold. Okay, so now we have an expression for our small signal voltage gain, which remember is what we set out to find. Uh, but of course, we need some numbers to plug into this. Uh, RC is easy enough to find, that's 6K. RB, that's 50K. Uh, but what do we do about the GM and our R pi? So these parameters here, so how do we figure that out? And so the answer is that we need to go back to our DC analysis. So let's say we need DC analysis to find our R pi and our GM. And so remember that those two values are going to depend on our Q point location. So that's why we spent all that trouble in the previous unit talking about how do we bias these devices so we can get the Q point where we want and we see ultimately this is also going to affect our small signal behavior. So let's sort of take this circuit up here and we're, we're kind of going to go the opposite right now. Instead of ignoring the DC sources, we're going to ignore the AC source. So we're just going to have a simple transistor with a base and collector uh, resistor. So we have something like this. Here's our emitter, which is still just grounded. Here is a collector resistor and VCC. So we have 12 volts, this is 6K, and then we have a base resistor, and that was 50K. And now because we are neglecting that small signal voltage Vs, we just have our VBB, which I'm just gonna draw as 1.2 volts like this, as opposed to showing the explicit battery connection. So now that we have this DC circuit, uh, I can define my variables as DC values. So I can call this, for instance, IBQ, this is going to be ICQ, and we're not necessarily going to solve for it, but we could also talk about VCEQ, and this is going to be our DC value of VBE. And so note the difference between when we initially wrote the circuit and we had, for instance, lowercase i, uppercase b, because this is a superposition of DC and AC signals. Okay, so coming back then to our DC analysis, 
Uh, pretty straightforward. We want to start on this base emitter loop because we're given that VBE is 0.7. So we can find our IBQ is equal to the 1.2 of VBB minus the 0.7 from VBE and divide that by our RB, which was 50K, and that gives us 10 microamps. All right, so now we're going to assume we're in the forward active mode. So let's say assume our forward active mode. And so what that gives us then is that, of course, our ICQ is going to be equal to beta IBQ. And we really hope we're in the forward active mode because remember, if we're not in the forward active mode, we're not going to have linear amplification. Uh, so this isn't going to be a very good amplifier. So 100 was given as our beta. Multiply that by our 10 microamps to get one milliamp. All right, and so now, now that we have our beta and our ICQ, we're ready to solve for our R pi and our GM. So previously, when we talked about our hybrid pi model, we said our R pi is equal to beta VT divided by ICQ. Now, of course, our VT is somewhat temperature dependent. So I'm going to make a note over here that we're also going to assume room temperature. So if we assume room temperature, that means our thermal voltage is going to be about 26 millivolts or 0.026 volts. Now, of course, there is some temperature dependence on that that you might have to account for if our temperature is much different than our quote unquote room temperature value of 300K. All right, so now let's just plug in our values. So we have our beta was 100. Our VT, we said we're assuming is about 20, 26 millivolts or 0.026 volts. We then have one milliamp, and so that's going to give us an R pi of 2.6 K ohms, all right? We also need our GM value. So our GM value we had found before was ICQ over VT, and so this is just going to be the one milliamp over 0 0.026 volts, and that is going to give us approximately 38.5 milliamps per volt. And so that's commonly how you'll see these parameters uh, reported. You'll see the, the R pi, the diffusion resistance in K ohms, small K ohms, and our GM, our transconductance, our small signal transconductance in milliamps per volts. Okay, so now we have our R pi GM. Of course, we know our RC and our RB, so we're ready to come back and plug into this AV equation. All right, so we can now say that our small signal voltage gain, AV, is approximately equal to negative, so our small signal transconductance, 38.5 milliamps per volts, times our, our, our RC, which was 6K ohms, and all of that times this ratio from our voltage divider, we had 2.6K ohms divided by 2.6 K ohms plus our RB, which was 50 K ohms. So again, notice I have here, of course, our K ohms are all going to cancel out. And here our K ohms and the milliamps are gonna make it such that we have volts. Volts divided by volts is going to give us a unitless or dimensionless um, answer for our voltage gain. And so if you plug that in, we see that our voltage gain ends up being approximately negative 11.4 for this circuit. Okay, so there's our answer, uh, but what exactly does that mean? So what we can do to sort of get some better insight is we can consider a specific input function. So instead of some arbitrary VS, let's look at a specific VS value. So let's say we have some VS of 0.25 sine, excuse me, sine of omega t. And so that's in volts. Okay, so if we know that, then we can use this small signal gain to say that our output voltage or the AC component of our output voltage should be negative 11.4 times this, 0.25 for the amplitude. And so we can do similar things to figure out values for our currents and other voltages in the circuit. So let me go ahead and put up some plots that I've prepared beforehand here. Uh, so if we're considering this particular input voltage, uh, this is, of course, what it's going to look like up here in the top left. So we have 0.25 sine omega t, so that means it's going to be varying between negative and positive 
starting with sort of the positive going peak. Uh, so if we have that, then of course our base current is also going to have some sinusoidal component as is our collector current and our VCE voltage. So all components, all currents and voltages in the circuit. So our VS was centered on a value of zero, but for our other three parameters, our IB, our IC, and our VCE, they're going to be centered on the Q point values. So highlighted here, we have our three Q point values. So let me actually just come back and label them. So this is going to be our IBQ of 10 microamps. This is our ICQ of one milliamp. And this is our VCEQ, which we didn't calculate, but if we did, we would have found that it was six volts. And so what we're seeing then is that we're seeing pretty clearly this superposition of the AC signal on top of the DC signal. So for our IB case, that means it's varying between 14.75 and 5.25 microamps with that average value of 10 microamps. For our IC, it's varying between 1.475 milliamps and 0.525 milliamps with that average value of one milliamp. And then finally for our output, we see it's varying between the 3.15 and the 8.85 with the average value of six volts. And the reason that that waveform has been flipped is because if we think about it as our, let's go back to our initial circuit, as our collector current here is increasing, the voltage drop across RC is increasing, which means that the voltage across VCE is decreasing. And so IC up means VCE goes down. And so that's why the peaks are sort of going in opposite directions. And we also see that reflected in our gain equation. So in our gain equation, we have this negative sign which also indicates that our input and output waveforms are going to be out of phase. So this would be our input waveform here, and this would be our output waveform. And so we see they're out of phase by 180 degrees, which is the same thing as multiplying by negative one.